I see a little glass tiger. Nice work. Robert is really on his game today. Normally just the host of the early edition, technical operator, participant in more in the morning, but today he's hanging around. See, it's Glass Tiger, the band. And we're talking about Tiger Woods. Uh -huh. And the song, Don't Forget Me When I'm Gone, because I'm Leaving. You see? See how he did that? Unbelievable. We're almost at the point where we may not need hosts. The man is a genius. You're right. I could go home right now. He'd just play <laughs> clips and music. People would phone in. They'd react. And yeah. I could, uh, and they'd just send me the check. I'll give you my home address. Send me the check. All right. So you 30 may... seconds into it, I've all of a sudden been cut right out of the whole equation. You just got fired. <laughs> all right. So let me bring you into the loop. If you've been living under a rock for two weeks, uh, I'm leaving the city of Toronto. And I'm not leaving News Talk 1010, which is uh, something that management and I worked out in the very final days of uh, my decision to leave town. It's just incredible that I will be here every day as part of John Tory's show, doing a daily commentary like Christy Blatchford does in this hour with me, five minutes. Uh, 5.35, Monday to Friday, I will be on with John Tory from the studios of KFI in Los Angeles. The Mighty. I, I will also, that's right, and the Mighty News Talk 1010. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I will also be a participant in talk shows from time to time when the issues warrant and time allows. And, and they'll probably, at some, you know, they were actually saying, so Bill, would you be willing to come on some talk shows every once in a while? And I'm, you're going to regret that because you're going <laughs> to you're going to be saying, why is Bill Carroll on every day? I thought he left. They're going to get sick and tired of hearing me from me because I'm really excited about being on America's biggest talk radio station. And Canada's biggest talk radio station every day. I think that's really cool. So, so uh, this is all pl a part of your plan for world it domination. It was part of my evil plot, and yeah. uh, I'm trying to get some kind of deal cut with Mexico right now, <laughs> but I haven't been able to do it. Now, so in the days after we decided that I was going to leave and how that was all going to happen, uh, Astro Media then had a job to do. They got to find a replacement, and one of the names that somebody ran by me early on, and I don't even know that they knew that I would recognize the name. But they ran a name by me, and I said, i, I got to tell you, I've been following this guy's career. Because I was so impressed that a Canadian broadcaster was, at one point in his career, he was on two of the biggest radio stations in America at the same time. But, uh, but you were doing two separate shows, right? They one were... was in the morning on uh, WLS in Chicago, and one was at night on WABC in New York. And by the way, they think they're the biggest radio. You know, there's a competition between those two. Well, WABC and KFI kind of flip back and forth right. depending on the, the ratings period. But you're right. The WABC is a monster talk station. This guy was doing two shows a day. One on WLS in Chicago, arguably the third greatest talk radio station in America. And unarguably the greatest city in America. I love Chicago. <laughs> the weather's crap. But so it is yeah. in Toronto. And time I love to Toronto. time. But Chicago, WLS. If you grew up listening to AM radio like I did, what a powerhouse radio station that always was and still is. So this guy was on WLS and WABC, and a few years ago I actually called him and said, how did you make that transition? And we had great conversation. I found you to be an impressive guy on the air. You had an impressive career going, and you were a really decent guy off the air. And now you're going to be sitting in here Monday morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Agar. Jerry yeah. Agar is going son, to join Son of me. Dave. You are Dave's grandson. <laughs> yeah, I should have said grandson. That's right. He's in the newsroom, not listening. <laughs> He's oblivious to what Doesn't we're talking about. That's just a coincidence. Uh, there's no actual relationship whatsoever, but I think I will from here on call myself Dave's grandson. Just It'll, it'll really annoy him, and that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Dave Agar, you'll find out. Uh, Dave Agar, one of the broadcast legends around here. And uh, you're not a you're not an Ontario boy. You are Canadian, but you didn't grow up in Ontario. I'm from the town of Gilbert Plains, Manitoba, um, home of 800 people approximately. That's what my father said. He ran the post office. But the sound, the the, the sign outside the town, the last time I was there, said "Home of 1,000 Happy People." Yeah, and 5,000 miserable people. Well, I was unhappy about something, so I had to leave. <laughs> But you must have known about this radio station growing up in Manitoba. I mean, because when you were younger, we seemed to be about the same age. Let's not talk about that. But yeah, uh, you must have known that this was a giant radio station. How does it feel to sit here? It's unbelievable because you're right. If you have any interest in the media whatsoever, you knew about this. I think you could have not that much interest in the media and know about 
uh, this radio station, Gordon Sinclair and Betty Kennedy and people like that would yeah. bring it, you know, sort of bring that name all across the country, you know. So let's uh, open up the phone lines here. And I don't want to talk about me or you. I want you to get to know Jerry Agar a little bit because he's going to be here full time on Monday morning. And uh, we're just going to get to know him by talking about the things we're going to talk about anyway. You were standing in the other room. Uh -huh. I noticed that my team in the other room didn't hear a word I was saying. And it's too bad I was brilliant, i got to tell you, my final day here. But they were too busy looking and laughing at Jerry Agar, who was yeah. in the same room doing well, a running laughing commentary. laughing at me. That's what they were doing. <laughs> get used to that. <laughs> yeah. Did you buy it? You watched it? You know what? Did you get I, caught up in it? I, I did, and I, I disagreed with your PR guy a little bit earlier, uh, where he was kind of uh, taking a sort of a cynical attitude toward it. Now, I don't know Tiger Woods personally, and so he, I'm certain that he has some pretty clever people around him and can afford the best in, in crafting the message. But what I liked about it is how much of the time have we seen politicians and athletes, who are, and maybe even the occasional actor or somebody like that, come before the cameras in this kind of circumstance, and afterwards you go, that, that wasn't an apology, that was a kind of, I'm sorry that I'm having trouble. He laid it all on himself. And I, you know, again, I can't, I can't decide who crafted that, but it was the right thing to do. Whose fault is it? My fault. And I don't blame him for getting a little bit emotional and, and uh, somewhat even arrogant uh, and angry at the media for the way they're chasing his family around. Yeah, see, we better be careful there because we're a bit blinded by that. We could take that personally. But I think his, his views are echoed by a lot of people listening to us right now who say, you guys do get a little carried away these days. Now, you listen to it and you buy it and you're part of this conspiracy that we get into people's private lives. Let's be honest. Yep. We do it because it sells. So you're not entirely off the hook. But there, you know, I sense with the Tiger Woods thing, there was a tipping point. It was maybe like two weeks in, and people started to go, okay, guys, enough. Leave him alone now and leave his family alone. So, uh, you know, I think we might be a little blind to that in the media, and we say, yeah, yeah, he shouldn't have yelled at the media for this. I think the public's going to go, if you're going to yell at the media for anything, it's chasing the guy's two-and-a-half-year-old around. That's uh, Yes, and his wife. who all of, And because he has, he's right, he has attempted to keep his family out of it. You know, like Kathy Lee Gifford used to drag her kid on TV and talk about him all the time, and I wonder how that affected the kid. You know, you try to leave your children out of this. If you want to make yourself a public personality, whether you're an athlete or a broadcaster or whatever, uh, don't dump that onto your family. And he never did. And I give him credit for that. And, and I, you know, whatever anybody wants to say about him, however much, if they want to follow him around with cameras, well, that's fair. He's a public personality. But if you follow people's little children around like that, then you just scum yourself. Yeah, especially when he's gone out of his way to say, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. He didn't use his children in ads or anything else. No. And if he did that, I'm okay with that, too. That's his choice. That's and still not an excuse decide, to follow them around. Yeah, we can decide what kind of parent that makes them, good parent sure. or bad parent, and what the right. security risks of having photographs of your, one thing to talk about your kids, another thing to go, and here's a picture, and this is where they go to school. Yeah. Those are very different matters. Uh, it's 12.15. We have less than a minute break, and then I'll come back take some of your calls on this as well. Star Talk, star 8255, 416 872 Bill Carroll and Jerry Agar. That's Dave's gonna be, grandson. That's going to be really hard to say. People are going to mess that up a lot because you hear Agar, you think Dave. But yeah. Let's go to the uh, News Talk 1010 Time Saver Traffic.